Hello again, it's great to be with you. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, we're working our way through Paul's letters to the uh, church in Thessalonica. And uh, currently we're in the first letter in chapter 4. And today we're going to look at verses 3 to 8, where Paul writes this. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honourable not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. So here's a subject we're generally not very good at talking about, and yet we make so many mistakes that cause so much pain that I wonder if perhaps part of our inability to discuss it is a problem in itself. You're about to see my evangelical colours here because I believe that the Bible is pretty clear about the way that God intends us to be. Genesis tells us that he made us male and female, and there's a reason for that. We can't procreate without a man and a woman being involved. It's just the way things are. It's the way he made us. And as a result, we are supposed to be in relationships with each other, and a particularly healthy form of relationship at that. Genesis also tells us that um, a man is supposed to leave his parents to be united with his wife. Please note the use of the singular in that statement. This isn't intended to be a multiple relationship situation a temporary or semi-permanent relationship, or even serial monogamy. It's just one husband, one wife, and vice versa. One wife, one husband. The truth is that we live in a world where there are now many ways that people engage in relationships with each other. And there are probably a myriad of reasons why we find ourselves drawn to relationships in their many forms. But the fact remains that this is the standard that God had in mind for us when he created humankind. Anything outside of that standard is separate from the things that God intended. I meet a lot of people who have been hurt by relationships that haven't worked out for some reason or another. Often those relationships, in fact more often than not, those relationships have started in the wrong place. In effect, they started with the physical part first, the sexual part first, not with a getting to know you bit or the falling in love with you bit first. And the result has often been longer term pain and hurt and separation. The truth is that God made us to be in relationship. We're made to be in relationship with each other, monogamously, for life, and to be in relationship with him in the same way, monogamously, and for life. Anything outside of that is not what he designed for us. Paul was teaching the Thessalonians that they needed to stay true to that standard, that they should stand apart from the things that were going on in the cultures around them. And we should do the same. It's not just because God says so, but also because it's better for us, for our mental, physical, emotional and spiritual health. That's about what Paul was talking about. It's about holiness and setting ourselves aside for the holiness that we need to maintain to have a healthy relationship with each other and with God. I'm going to leave you to think about that and let's pray. Lord God, thank you that you always had a plan for us. Thank you that your design for life and love for us was perfect from the beginning. Lord, we ask that you would forgive us for the times when we strayed from those patterns of relationship. Restore us once more, we ask, to the place where we're supposed to be. Renew a right spirit within us and strengthen us to withstand the trials and temptations that the world throws up. And Lord, we ask you for healing in the places where we have known pain and hurt and separation. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day.